Hey, what's up? It's Vani Hudson with securityplusPro.com, and today I'm going to show you a couple of things. One, I'm going to show you how to open up the Windows command prompt. I'm going to show you a one trick for doing it, and then another trick is a shortcut for opening the elevated command prompt. Then I'm going to show you how to get help for almost any Windows command, and then we're going to look at the ping utility, and finally we'll close up with the ARP utility. Okay, so here I am right now in my Windows 10 machine. And one of the quick ways to bring up the command prompt is just to hit the Windows key and type CMD. If I do that, I press enter, command prompt opens right up. Another option is to hit the Windows key and type PowerShell, press enter. Now, PowerShell and the command prompt are basically synonymous. Uh, so if everything you can do in the command prompt, you can do in PowerShell, but you can do more in PowerShell. PowerShell is really awesome. This isn't a course on PowerShell, so I'm not gonna get into that, but I just wanted to make you aware that is a one, one method of opening the command prompt. The last one is to hit the Windows key and then hit CMD. And then you want to press Control Shift Enter. That's the shortcut for opening an elevated command prompt. Here you can see on my screen, it is prompting me for administrative credentials for the Security Plus Pro Windows domain. So I just entered those credentials, I pressed Enter, and I am now here. You can see I am the administrator. So let me show you some of the commands that we're going to look at. First, everybody knows you can type ping uh, yeah, ping, P-I-N-G, to basically ping an IP address, right? And here you can see I'm pinging 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is Google's public DNS server. Um, if you ever have, if you have a, uh, if you have a command like ping and you want to get options for it, you can usually just type the forward slash and then the question mark to get those options. So here you can see I can do a couple of things. I can resolve addresses to host names with the dash A. I can ping with a uh, specified host until stopped. So to see statistics and continue, I can hit type control break. So this is telling me different options that I can do. One that's really nice is this dash in count. So normally when I type ping, I'm just gonna press the up key to bring back the last command. If I type ping 8.8.8.8, .8 it's only gonna ping it four times. But if I hit up, hit dash in, and then I type five, two, three, for, it should ping it five times. One, two, three, four, five, and it did. So that's pretty cool. And so there's some other options in here as well. The point of showing you this is just that there are different techniques for using ping. And it all comes down to that forward slash question mark option, okay? So let's look at ARP. Now ARP is really cool. A lot of people don't really know why you need ARP. But ARP is critical. So if we do ARP space forward slash question mark, you'll see that there is a dash A command, which is probably the most common. And this shows you all the current ARP entries. So let me take a moment and explain what ARP is. And we're gonna look at this in a little more detail in a moment. But ARP stands for the Address Resolution Protocol. It operates at layer two in the OSI model. And the way it works is whenever you ping a host on the internet, for example, 8.8.8.8, .8 the first thing your computer does is it says, and I'm gonna show you this, this a command a little later, IP config, but it's gonna look at its IP address, 10.1.1.0, sorry, 10.1.1.10, and its subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. And it's gonna say, okay, I'm in the 10.1.1.0 network, 10.1.1.0 network, because the first three octets are all 255. So I am in the 10.1.1.0 network. I'm trying to access a host in the 8.8.8.8 it's not a network, but I'm trying to access that particular host, which is actually, it's a class A IP address. So technically it would be in the 8.0.0.0 network. And sorry if this is kind of confusing. We're gonna talk about all this a little later, but the point is the computer says, hey, this host 8.8.8.8 is not in my subnet. So I need to send, I need to basically send out an ARP message to my default gateway saying, hey, default gateway, which is configured right here, I need to know who has the IP address 10.1.1.1. Tell 10.1.1.10, that's me. And then 10.1.1.1, my default gateway replies with his MAC address, which is a layer two address. You could actually see that by looking at this command right here. And we'll look at this again in more detail, but this is the MAC address. And so the default gateway replies with its MAC address, and then I send an ARP request. Um, I send the ARP reply back to that particular host and then communication is able to, to continue. So 
The ARP command is really important. If I type ARP space minus A, you can see here, these are all the ARP requests that my machine has, that my machine is aware of. And typically it lasts for about 300 seconds by default, which I think is about five minutes. So here you can see the MAC address for the default gateway. You can see the MAC address for this other host, 10.1.1.2, which happens to be my Cisco switch right here, I think. Uh, let's see, I do show IP and brief. Yeah, so that is my, my Cisco switch. And then there's a bunch of other hosts down here. So that's pretty much how that works. Let me show you what this looks like in a packet capture because it might make a little more sense when we look at what's going on on the wire. So we're gonna open up Wireshark. Okay, awesome. So let's open up the command prompt again. We're going to, have to ping 8.8.8.8. And it's going to do a uh, filter for ARP. Now I'm not seeing anything. That's probably because I need to clear out the ARP cache. And I knew it was ARP D because if I do ARP space forward slash question mark, dash D deletes the host specified by the internet address. So I just deleted the ARP cache. And now you can see some messages here. And the first thing that happened is my machine basically sent out this ARP request and it's saying, hey, who has 10.1.1.1? Remember, that is my default gateway and it's coming from me. I'm 10.1.1.10. My target IP address is 10.1.1.1. And I'm saying, who has this IP address? Who has that MAC address? Tell me, because you can see here in the original packet, the sender MAC is 21FE. Remember, 21FE is, let's go back up, 21FE is me. So I'm the sender, but the destination or the target MAC is all, is all zeros because it doesn't know about it. So it sends out this ARP request. And then you can see here that 10.1.1.1, which is the default gateway, actually replied with his MAC address. So you can see here the sender, which is the default gateway in this case is FE01. So if I now do an ARP A, you can see I have it now the MAC address for 10.1.1.1 FE01. So I know it's kind of complicated and I didn't really go into a lot of detail here. Remember the purpose of this post is really just to show you how to open the command prompt uh, as an elevated, how to open an elevated command prompt, how to use the forward slash question mark, and then how to use ping and ARP. So I'm sorry if I went a little too deep. Sometimes I can't help myself. Don't worry, we'll get into all of this a little later uh, through our training. But uh, next week, I'm going to show you, again, I'm going to show you IP config, netstat, and tracer T. Make sure you subscribe to this video if you're watching, well, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching it on my blog, make sure you scroll down and you sign up for our newsletter. That is where I can send you uh, constant updates and give you the latest facts, everything you need to pass the Security Plus exam. So make sure you thumb this video up and leave a comment if you have any questions. And I look forward to coming back next week where we will look into IPconfig, NetStat, and TracerT. Hope you enjoyed this video.